Welcome back to my channel. It's that time of the year where it's getting really cold outside and what better way to warm up than with a nice rich hearty bowl of chili. No beans of course. So that's what we're going to do today. So sit back, snuggle up with your favorite blanket while I show you how to make this rich, delicious, no bean chili. First, let's start off with our list of ingredients. You'll need 48 ounces of beef broth, one green pepper, three multicolored peppers. You can add one to two jalapenos if desired, five pounds of 80-20 ground beef, three medium onions, sea salt, ground cumin, chili powder, two 12 ounce cans of tomato paste, a four ounce can of diced green chilies, mild or hot is up to you, minced garlic, jarred or fresh, and three 14.5 ounce cans of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Now grab one of your peppers and cut the bottom off and then cut the top off as close to the stem as you can. And then following the natural lines in your pepper, we're gonna cut along them inside and out alternating. This is the way that I cut it. And as you can see, there's hardly any of the interior white or seeds left from the pepper. Then just go ahead and dice up the rest of it. Then we'll just repeat this process for the rest of the peppers. Like I said earlier, you can add one to two jalapenos if you like it on the mild side. But if you're like me, when I make it for myself, the more the merrier. We're gonna start by cutting off the hairy part of the onion. If onions make you cry, this is the part that's the cause of it. Now what we're gonna do is cut it down the middle and then peel the outer layer off. Then we're gonna pinch it from the sides and we're gonna carefully cut between our fingers and then turn it and we're gonna cut it into dices, rolling it halfway through so that way we get nice even pieces. Now I don't cut onions in what's considered the proper way. This is just my preferred method. I find this works for me, but I will show you in a future video what's considered the proper way. I will, however, show you the proper way to hold a knife. You start by pinching it between your thumb and your forefinger at the end of the handle and then wrap the rest of your fingers around. Now the one thing that you don't want to do is put your finger on the blade. That's a no-no. I just wanted to add this little bonus tip because I have seen a few videos in the past where people have been holding knives in ways that have worried me a little bit. Knife safety is very important, so I just wanted to add this as a little reminder. Now back to the recipe. We're going to add our five pounds of ground beef to a large stock pot. If you're doing a smaller batch, go ahead and use a smaller pot. But this is a large batch. It usually lasts my family two to three days. So I'm using a large pot, but again, you can just divide this in half or in thirds, whatever you prefer. Next, we're going to add our onions our bell peppers, and if you decided to add jalapenos like I recommended, this is the time when you would add them. Then grab your spoon and just mix them up really well, getting the onions and peppers and ground beef all incorporated. Now you are cooking this over a medium high heat, so you are gonna wanna keep everything moving. If you let it sit too long, it will burn to the bottom of the pan, so just make sure that you keep stirring it. Now I know in the last video where I used ground beef, I did say that I add water to the pot to help break up the beef, but in this case with the water content in the vegetables and the tomato that we're going to be adding, that's not necessary. I'd like to also add that if you want to add any kind of sausage or pork or whatever in the place of some of the ground beef, you know, that would be perfectly fine. Chorizo would be really good in this but I usually just tend to stick with the basic ground beef because you know it's a classic and you can't go wrong with it. Now when your mixture looks like this, go ahead and remove it from the stove. Drain most of the grease out, not all. As you can see, you wanna leave a little bit in there because that's a lot of flavor. Then just give it a mix. And now you're gonna add your other ingredients. We're gonna start off with 48 ounces of beef broth. Then go ahead and give that a quick stir. To that, we're gonna add three tablespoons of minced garlic. We're gonna add nine tablespoons of chili powder, six teaspoons of ground cumin, 
and six teaspoons of sea salt. Now we'll add our three cans of 14.5 ounces of fire roasted tomatoes, our can of green chilies, and our two cans of tomato paste. Then just give it a stir, make sure everything's incorporated. Then we're just going to add a lid, which is going to help bring it up to a boil. Once it's boiling, remove the lid, give it a good stir, and then you're just going to reduce the heat down to just above a simmer, and we're just going to let it cook for about 30 minutes, and then you're just going to want to come back and stir it. And you're just going to keep repeating this process for at least one to two hours. I like to cook mine all day. Remember, the longer that you cook it, the thicker it's going to be and the more intense the flavor is going to be. So if you want more of a soup like chili, only one to two hours, but if you like it really thick like me, just let it cook all day. And there we are, everyone. Nice, rich, thick, hearty bowl of chili. It's been slow cooking all day and this, the air in here just smells amazing. So. I can't wait to dig in. I've been waiting to dig in all day. Yes, I've been tasting it, but you know what? It's still not the same. So let's dig in. Hmm. That is thick and rich. Look at that. How hearty that is. This is absolutely amazing. All them flavors are just coming together and just supporting each other and just making one really delicious dish that's just rich, hearty. This is amazing. I definitely recommend you try it. Now, I know that, that some people like uh, sour cream and cheese and all that other stuff in their chili, but I'm telling you, this doesn't need it. I'm usually one of those people and I don't even want to put it in it. I know that I'm not doing dairy this month, but even if I wasn't, I mean, if I was doing dairy, I wouldn't put it in here. This is perfect just the way it is, but it's up to you. If you want to do it, be perfect. Now, I didn't put jalapenos in here like I normally would because most of my family really doesn't like the spicy foods, so I try to omit them whenever I can. Ordinarily, I would put them in here because they are so good in here enhances the flavor gives a little bit of a spiciness so if you're like me and you like the spicy foods i would definitely put that in there but you know if your family it doesn't like uh spicy food like mine just go ahead and leave it out like i did and the great thing about this chili is it's so versatile that you can add it to your eggs your hot dog your hamburger whatever you want it'll just enhance that flavor and just push it right over the top i highly recommend that you make this I hope it keeps you nice and warm this winter. And if you haven't already and you've made it this far, please subscribe down below, hit the like button, add any comment that you want. I read them all, I heart them all. I welcome all comments, questions, and criticism. So feel free to leave anything down below that you want, recipe ideas, um, your thoughts on this recipe, or anything in general. If you wanna talk about anything keto, fitness, doesn't matter. Leave it in the comments below. Let's start a conversation. So with that being said, thank you for stopping by. Stay awesome and I'll see you soon.